So how do we make sense of this? A majority of Americans do not want a rematch between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, but Biden is running again and will be the nominee. And Trump is running again and is the overwhelming front runner for the Republican nomination. People claim they want change. They want new and different choices. And yet the same candidates are renominated time and time again. Joining us now to discuss is former White House Chief of Staff for President George W. Bush, Mr. Carl Rove. Welcome to you, Carl. All right, help me reconcile those. They seem inconsistent. People say they don't want a rematch of 2020, and yet both Biden and Trump are the current front runner. So how do we make sense of that? Well, they're the most familiar uh, faces around, and it's the beginning of the contest. Remember, at, at this point in, 2000, in the 2003-2004 election, uh, leading into the Iowa caucuses, Howard Dean was ahead. In 2008, Hillary Clinton was ahead. Uh, in 2004, uh, excuse me, 2012, uh, Newt Gingrich was ahead going into the Iowa caucuses. So there's, right now, these are the two most visible people uh, in the electorate, and you're right, People do not want them to run again. The, the, take a look at, at uh, the, the Monmouth poll. Among Democrats, only 25 percent would prefer that Biden run again. 44 percent said they would prefer that he step aside. That's how they, that's the word that they use, prefer. And 30 percent said they had no preference. Those are the people who are being plied who are, who are really thinking more like the 44 percent. In the AP National Opinion Research poll, 27 percent of all Americans said, yes, I want Joe Biden to run again. 73 percent, no. There were similar numbers. 70 percent said, we don't want Donald Trump to run again. So if I were a betting man, I'd put money on Trump and Biden to be the nominees, but I would bet on the field against them because I think that sentiment is only going to grow. People are not going to get more excited about either one of these two choices. All right, Carl, uh, to get to Congress, you have to win a couple of neighborhoods. To get to the White House, you got you to win the Electoral College. What states that Republicans lost the last time around do you think would really be in play in 2024. I mean, where can they pick up electoral college votes? Well, we had we had a couple of states that were very narrow, and you know, Arizona and Georgia, in in, in particular, and Wisconsin to a lesser extent. All three of those could. But but look, this is going to depend on the candidates. My view is, if it's Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Uh, Joe Biden is likely to win unless the concerns about age grow and our concerns about Kamala Harris grow. But if it is Biden against any virtually any other Republican, Arizona, Georgia, Wisconsin are going to flip. And then probably some other states like like Pennsylvania and Nevada, which was very close and New Hampshire, which was close. Uh, so th th there's gonna, there's going to be some play in this uh, in this electoral map, but only if it's a different face, because people know who Trump is. People don't know who Biden is. Both of them have their detractors and they also have their detractors inside their own party. In the national, in the Associated Press National Opinion Research poll, 19 percent of Democrats and 29 percent of Republicans said they would not support their nominee if they were, were respectively Biden and Trump. That's a real problem if you nominate, if either party nominates those people, and that there are going to be a bunch of people inside the party who are saying, you know what, Biden's too old, Trump is too controversial, we need to turn the page. And the party that turns the page, I think, is going to have the upper hand in 2024. All right. You have forgotten more about this than I will ever know. I take your word that, that, that all the names you just called were the front runners and they wound up not being the nominee. It seems like President Trump's lead is pretty prohibitive right now. But what challenge, what do challengers need to do to make a race of this on the GOP side? Yeah. Well, first, they need to articulate a vision that says, I am change and I'm new and different. Uh, I've been a successful governor or successful senator. I've been a successful leader in private sector. I, I, and I've got a vision for the future that causes you to say, you know what, that sounds good. Second of all, they've got to deal with, with President Trump. They've got to say, you know what, you did a lot of good things, but you got baggage. You got baggage in the fact that you've been indicted for things. You may be indicted for more things, that you're a controversial figure, that, and that you failed to do things. You know, you said you'd build the wall. Well, when you came into office, here's how, how long the wall was. When you left office, it wasn't much longer. You said you'd take on China and you get this, you proclaim that you got this fantastic treaty with China to buy a bunch of our American agricultural products, and it didn't happen. You did nothing to attack China on, 
on the issue of, of uh, stealing our intellectual property, of stealing our ideas and manufacturing processes and science and technology. You didn't do anything about that. So I appreciate the good things you did, but frankly, we need new leadership that's actually going to get things done, and I've got a demonstrated record in doing that. They're not going to be able to tiptoe around them. They've got to deal with them head on, and they've got to say, you know, the American people want more than a rerun of 2020, which is exactly where the American people are, as virtually every poll is showing us. Yes, these men have their supporters. Yes, these men have their detractors. But more important than that is we've been governed for 32 years by members of the greatest generation. And the idea of an 82-year-old and a 78-year-old bat battling out for the White House is not people's idea of what they want to see. Carl Rove from the great state of Texas. Thank you for joining us, Carl. Look forward to visit you with bet. you throughout this election cycle. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.